Hi, it's Jill Osborne from the IC Network and I'm here in my office today to give you another self-help tip on living with IC. This time, I have to tell you, I'm pretty angry because I received yet another phone call from another patient who was told that IC was all in her head. And how unfair and tragic is that to minimize a patient and blame her bladder symptoms on her? Now let me show you an, a picture of an IC bladder. You see those red spots, those red wounds? Those are wounds. We call those petechial hemorrhages or glomerulations. This is not from an emotional condition. There's no way that an emotion is going to give you this degree of bladder damage. Rather, we think that IC often begins after some type of trauma. We had a guy fell off his roof, broke his leg that night, woke up with IC. We see bladder irritation happening in people who've gone through chemo or radiation. Sometimes bladder injury happens with people who have really horrible diets. They drink a lot of coffee, a lot of soda. Bladder injury can also happen after uh, getting a really bad bladder infection. But there's not a single ounce of evidence that I'm aware of that says that IC occurs due to some sort of emotional problem. It's just not true. For anyone who knows me, they know that I fight back. And that's what I want you to do. If you have anyone suggest to you that IC is all in your heads, I want you to ask them a basic question. How can an emotional condition cause the bladder to bleed? Okay. How can an emotional condition create Hunter's ulcers? How can an emotional condition cause widespread, proven irritation and inflammation? Well, but let me give you a little bit of a history lesson because I think it'll help you understand why IC has been mislabeled. IC was originally discovered in, in about 1860 and then after the cystoscope was invented and you know the cystoscope is the instrument that they use to look into your bladder uh, it was discovered that IC patients often had ulcers and in fact it was a researcher or doctor named Guy Hunter who discovered the ulcers which is why they're called Hunter's ulcers then in the early 1940s, we had some of the first research that showed that not only women, but also men and children also had symptoms of IC. But it was the 1950s that created this misimpression that IC was emotional. Why? Because two young doctors had a young woman who was in her 20s who had severe symptoms. And they published a paper in which they claimed that her symptoms were the result of unexpressed anger in the pelvis. And that was the beginning of what I call the dark ages of the IC movement because it was from that time until about the late 1980s that many medical schools just started telling people, telling residents and young doctors that IC wasn't real, that it was a medical condition. And in fact, if you go to older doctors today, there are still some who still believe that. But it's now 2009. The National Institutes of Health has done dramatic research on IC. We, know, we now know that it absolutely involves a very irritated, injured, and in some cases, wounded bladder. Thus, it is not an imaginary condition. Hello? It's a real condition. So for any of you who are faced with that type of feedback or criticism, I want you to hold your head up high. I want you to look them in the eyes and I want you to say, sir or ma'am, that is simply not true. And I have a question for you. How can an emotional condition that's all in my head cause a wound or a hunter's ulcers in my bladder? And you know, it's really interesting. There's a, a re, uh, an IC clinician, his name is Dan Brookoff. He's the pain specialist in the United States. He has a very good story that he tells about it when he went through med school. 
and um, he had a uh, four-hour urology round. I think it was four. It might have been a day. Uh, and where IC was introduced, and this famous guy said, "Hey, there's a disease. You might rarely see it. It's it's basically women who have to pee a lot. It's all in their heads." And and I think this was like the late 1970s when he was at this lecture. And so somebody in the audience said, "Well, what do you do about it?" And the researcher said, "Well." You know, you uh, you event you treat them, and eventually you take their bladder out. And then it's some, another person in the audience said, "But if it's all in their heads, why would you take their bladders out?" And hello, that is the question. That is the ultimate question. There's really no doubt at all that IC is real. It is real. It is treatable. We've got great self-help strategies. We've got amazing research that's happening right now. And if anybody, especially a doctor, suggests to you that this is not real, I would suggest that you then get a second opinion with another cl clinician because you deserve better care and a more informed physician than what you currently have. I hope that that helps. And if you're looking for more information on IC, you can come visit our website at www.ic-network.com.